Ron, when you play a team so close back to back like this, how much changes do you expect from them? Well, because it was earlier in the season, a lot. You know, we played them game, uh, week two, so this is week six. So the anticipation, or at least my anticipation, is that you go back and you look at the things that they've done from those previous three weeks and, and you sit there and say, okay, they've changed this, they've changed this. So you do anticipate change. You, you do anticipate them, you know, looking at what, what some of the opponents that we've played have done against us as well. And, you know, you can see them trying to add those things to what they do. With the time change and everything, is there anything you guys tell the guys in order to get ready? What we've tried to do is, is you know, we, we started a, a day early, you know, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, with the idea of, of, you know, really trying to adapt by leaving Wednesday night, getting there Thursday, trying to keep the guys up as much as we can, and then trying to make Friday, Saturday uh, as normal as possible. You know, and, and again, just trying to get them to, to understand how important it is that they do certain things that, you know, that we've talked with them about. Um, we saw Cam scootering out her bike. <laughs> Cam, I don't know, biking or scootering, whatever okay. you want to call it, out to practice today. Is that the next step in his progression, being more involved? Or? Well, not on the scooter. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he's just continuing his rehab, um, you know, and, and we're just going to continue from there. We have no timeline. Uh, again, he'll go through whatever they have planned out and mapped out for him, and then uh, as we progress, we'll see. Is he going to be making the trip to London? No, he won't make the trip. You know, medically, it's the best thing to keep him from being on an airplane for eight hours. And standing up all over, you know, all the time. So again, uh, he won't make the trip. You know, Kyle's our starter, and we'll continue that way. And uh, you know, again, just looking forward to focusing in on on getting ready for Tampa. It's a very important divisional game. Um, you know, we've we've got a lot of things riding on it. And, uh, we're playing well, and we'd like to continue to do that. Is that kind of the rationale too for him not being at the yes, game? Or the... the doctors don't think it's a good idea to have a guy standing around for three and a half, four hours with a foot situation. Kyle said that he's been, Cam has been so helpful to him during the meetings, during the week. Is there any one example that you can point to as, as a time when, you know, Cam might have been able to tell him something or show him something on film and it then manifests um, in the game? Honestly, no, because I'm not in their meeting. You know, I'm in the defensive side. So, uh, but I have heard that Cam's been in the meeting. Uh, I've seen him in the meeting rooms, going or going into the meeting rooms, uh, on my way to the defensive meetings. Does, does it seem plausible, Ron, just because you're going to have a week there and then a week off when you get back that he, you might look at him at that <coughs> 49ers week to kind of test it? I can't tell you. There's no timetable, okay? He's just going through his rehab, and, and that's where we are. I mean, right now, Kyle's our starter, and, you know, that's what we're going to go with. What is the biggest difference you've noticed in your team versus where you were against Tampa the first time and how you see them when you look at them now? Well, I think, you know, looking at it defensively, first and foremost, you know, the, the biggest thing I've seen, the biggest change has really been the pass rush, how it seems to be syncing up, how you see these guys coming together and understanding how to work with one another. The next is you see the, 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 the communication between the secondary, the linebackers, and the D-line. Um, you know, with, 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 with Trey – back there and, and Trey Boston and, and you see the comfort level he has again working with Luke because you know remember he worked with them during the 2015 season and you see that you see that happening <clears throat> excuse me and that's been really good to see um, so again that that's part of it offensively you see you know really kind of Christian stepping up I mean you know he's he's had a you know he's had a good couple of games to begin with but then the last few you really see him stepping into his role obviously um, and you, you see Kyle distributing the ball to different guys as well. So, you know, it's just really everybody kind of finding our footing, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, the old line seems to be coming together, and we've had some transitions, some changes in the last few weeks, you know, with, with, with Trey having been out and, and moving Daryl to right guard and, you know, going from, from Greg Little to, to, to Dennis Daly. I mean, you know, that left tackle position seems to be holding up pretty good right now as well. So that's probably the biggest thing, I, I, I think, again, um, you know, special teams wise, we, 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 we got a little something going there. We got Ray Ray, who we know is a dynamic returner, um, and we're building confidence in him. We've, we've got a, you know, we, we, we've got a pretty dynamic punt rush. You know, we've had two punts we've blocked so far this year, and that's been good to see the development on special teams as well. Ron, we made a big deal about Kyle Allen being undrafted, but the top, what, top sack, uh, sack leader in the league right now. Um, from the Bucks, and then you got Mario number three, both undrafted players. How do they slip through the cracks in the draft, or, or is it different with defensive players that develop later? No, I think it's the same, and, and, and really it's just about getting opportunities. You know, sometimes guys play at smaller schools, and, and you don't get a chance to really get to know who they are. Um, you know, the biggest thing about, about Mario for us is, is he's a guy that, you know, our scouts saw 
on the pro side and, and just felt this might be a guy that might fit what we want to do. You know, this this was several years back, and, and he's grown and developed, and sometimes guys are late bloomers. Um, you know, but they're, they're, the draft is not exact science, okay? So, and with only seven rounds now, you know, I, I play with Richard Denton with a 12th round pick. If we had only had seven rounds back then, everybody would have talked about him, at, you know, the same way because now he's a Hall of Famer. He'd have been undrafted, but he was a 12th round pick. So it's not an exact science. You don't, you don't, you know, not every first rounder is going to be a Hall of Famer and not every free agent is going to be a Hall of Famer. But, you know, along the way, those guys step up. Are you flourishing though this year? Are the pace he's on this year is productive? Because of some of the things that we've done to give him opportunities, and he's 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 taken to it very well. He really has. He he understands uh, some of the packages and stuff that we're using. We move his we move him around. He moves himself around and puts himself in position. He works very well with everybody on our line. That's probably the biggest thing. Is you see that you see that 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 communication that that comfort level. The understanding that's created, um, and he, he he's done exactly what we've asked. I mean, he he's been terrific. He, God bless, he's been terrific. So that's you know that's really cool. What what is it about Shaq Barrett that, that has made him have this breakout year? I know Greg Van Roten just told us you know we, we might not have given this guy enough credit going in week two. Why why has he been able to flourish so much? Well, I think you know it, it's a style of what they do too now. Some guys take to certain systems a lot better. You know, and this is a very aggressive scheme that they have. It's not like they sit back and wait. You know, you, you have guys that you tell them, hey, go forward. It's a lot different than having to sit there and read and react to things. Um, you know, the thing, thing that we've done for, for Mario is, you know, Mario just doesn't line up on the outside anymore. You see Mario inside and outside. You see him on the right side and on the left side. So, um, you know, he, Mario has that skill set. Brian Burns has that skill set. Um, you know, Bruce Irvin has that skill set. These are guys that we can do some things with and we can continue to be creative with them and give them opportunities to make plays. And how they don't sit back like that. Is that pretty characteristic of what Todd likes to do? Yes, Even Todd's, going back Todd's to always York? been aggressive. When he was in, in Arizona the first time, a very aggressive uh, defensive scheme, very aggressive play caller. You mentioned Mario. How much better has he gotten over the years at, like, setting the edge, that part of his game? Oh, he's, you know, it's funny because I remember everybody talking about he's too small, he's too small. But the one thing you can't can't measure is is really his mentality of, of and how hard he plays. Um, he's a very explosive guy too. So again, it's about getting his leverage and being able to hold that point. And he does a great job with it. Football players are such creatures of habit, especially like veteran players. They kind of try to do the same thing. How how tough is it to try and keep that habit when you're playing in a different country, have to fly overnight? Well, I'll tell you right now. You know, we have not had a normal week since we started. You know, this year, think about it. We had the opening week, then we played Thursday night, and then we had to get ready to go to Arizona. We went early. Then we came home. It was a normal week and played. And, or excuse me, then we went on the road again uh, to, to the Texans. Then we came home for what was typically a normal week, and now we're into another week. So we've had, you know, six different weeks. So for our guys right now, this really is just a getting used to it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create as much familiarity with things as possible by trying to make Friday – coming up as typical a Friday as possible. I mean, we're trying to do Tuesday and Wednesday as our Wednesday, Thursdays, knowing that we're going to travel Wednesday night. We're going to get there, hopefully get acclimated as much as possible, continue that process on the coming Friday, you know, keep it as normal as we can. Um, so there really is no routine these guys have had yet. So really they've handled it pretty well the last three weeks. That's what I'm pretty excited about is that we've had some different looks and the guys have handled that very well. So you know, continuing that attitude going forward. And one of the things I told the guys, embrace it because they got to travel too. So there's nobody got an edge. It's just, you know, how you handle it, your perception on it, your attitude going forward. And then, again, giving yourself the best opportunity to be successful. Were there discussions about when to, when to head over there or was it always kind of No, we had a lot of discussions and talked about it, you know, and, and, and we looked around and, 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 you know, several teams have done it differently. Some teams have gone for the whole week. Some teams have just gone on Friday. Some teams have gone on Thursday. Um, and one other team has gone on Wednesday afternoon, and they won. So, you know, uh, that's what I'm hoping. No, but the truth matters, and we talked about it, and the biggest thing we talked about was trying to make sure Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are as normal as possible for our guys. That's our whole attitude towards it.
to that point, what have you said or can you say to F.A. to not play tour guide, to not see all the boys, <laughs> to not get all hyped up? That's one of the things that we've tried to make sure our guys understand is that at the end of the day, it's still a business trip and, and, and we have to understand what our primary focus is and our objective. Our, our focus is getting ready to play a football game to win. Our, our, you know, again, the objective is to get there, you know, do the things we're supposed to and play to win, obviously. And that's what we've really tried to focus on. We've talked about it for a couple of days. Um, we talk, I talked about it last week and talked about it again today, you know, in our first meeting, but these guys get ready for it. Would you guess uh, Trey and Greg Little will both not make the trip also? I'm not going to guess anything until I hear from, from Ryan uh, later today, you know, because once I get an opportunity to find out exactly who's, who they feel is, is ready to, to, to come along, we'll go from there. How do you handle that, like, logistically, if there's guys on the bubble? I mean, I'm sure you're taking your practice squad guys. Mm -hmm. And how would, would you and Marty handle, like, any possible transactions over there? Um, as, um, you know, as you go through it, hopefully nothing happens where you've got to worry about the transactions. We'll keep an eye as to what's going on. But, you know, we do have a couple guys, uh, you know, that, that, you know, we have to talk about where they are uh, health-wise, uh, whether it makes sense for them to come or not. You know, um, and, and really, whoever we bring along it apparently is close to being ready to play is probably the best way to put it, Joe. I mean, I, you know, to, to be up front with you on that, that's the best I can tell you. You mentioned how this is going to be a business trip regardless, but for someone like F.A. clearly is, is a bigger story and a bigger picture for that. You know, just his story seems so incredible. How do you sort of... Well, appreciate the value of that, I guess. But, but the truth is, his story is no better than, than, than Reggie Bonifant's. It's a guy that's just looking for opportunity. I mean, I, I, you know, you talk about F.A.'s, you know, growing up. That's a tremendous story. But as a football player, you know, when you get your chance, it's about taking advantage of the opportunity. And that's what F.A.'s done. You know, he, he started off in the international program, made a practice squad, you know, and, and, and then made an active roster. I mean, he's, he's done that in, in four years. You know, and, and here's a guy that, you know, didn't grow up playing football like we do here in the United States. So when he got his opportunity to play in, in England, you know, it sh he showed. And so they gave him the chance and he took advantage of it. So that to me is really what the story is when you get past his growing up. I mean, his growing up is an unbelievable story. But as a football player, it's about opportunities and taking advantage. Like I said, Reggie Bonifant's a perfect example of a guy getting an opportunity and taking advantage. Well, same thing with F.A. <laughs> Um, I think F.A. knows, you know, because he's trying to downplay it because I talked to him today about it. And, um, you know, and, and he kind of gave me, well, no, we're going out there to, 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 to win, Coach. That's, where, that's what I'm going for, you know. So, and, and I know, you know, being realistic, he, he will be bombarded, as deservedly so. I mean, he's a young man that's from England that's gotten an opportunity. So it's, it's a cool story. Right, what do you remember most vividly from when you went over there in 86? <laughs> um, well, you know, we had just won the Super Bowl, so we were like a bunch of rock stars. Um, it was, and I'm being serious, it was crazy because we did the whole, um, the, the um, um, what's that, uh, the, the famous road? Um, the Abbey Road, if you looked that up, with, um, with uh, Jim McMahon and, and a group of our offensive linemen, they, they, they mimicked the picture. Um, Phil Collins came out and, and uh, hung out with us one day for practice, hung out with Walter Payton, and a group of them went back to his studio and they had a little jam session. Um, and it, I mean, it really was. It was, it was, you know, because it was a preseason game. So, you know, and so as starters, we knew, you know, we were going to be in for, you know, 12 plays and that was it. So, you know, it was, it was cool. I mean, it really was. And we, and we went for a whole week. That's the other thing. So it's not like we were the in and out. And so even though it was a quote unquote business trip, um, I think the guys really did, uh, you know, did enjoy it. I mean, it was, it was an adventure. It really was. Was Walter the biggest star? Um, it came down to him and, um, him, McMahon, and uh, William Perry. Seriously, I mean, I mean, it really was because you know at the time William was 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 real interesting because he was he was a big man. I mean, not everybody had guys that were 325 pounds, and so to see you know see him walking around and just kind of enjoying it um, was was I mean, it really was. It was kind of neat uh, to see. And um, the, the hardest thing, in all honesty, too, was getting used to crossing the street because they're on the other side. So, you know, you, 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 they, for one of the first things they did tell us back to was make sure you look both ways because they're coming from the other direction. So that was... Bonus question from Joe. <laughs> are, are you, one, are you make going to oh, pass that same advice on to your team? <laughs> yeah. And are you encouraging your staff to bring their families? Or how do you handle that? Um, as far as that's concerned, that's up to them. I, I don't want to dissuade anybody, you know, because um, every time I've, I've gone, you know, um, 
you know, parts of my family have gone, whether it be Stephanie, Stephanie and the kids. Um, when I went, when I was on North staff, uh, Courtney went because um, she was, you know, it was part of a school project. She had to do a big report on it too. She was, I think she was a sophomore in high school at the time. So, but it was, it was a pretty cool experience. You know, like I said, it's really about your attitude when you go there. If you go there, oh, here we go. No, you know, then, then to me, you're not focusing in on the reason why you're going. That's to play a game and win. So, again, we just got to make sure our focus is where it needs to be. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.